Alright guys, today we have the third injury report of this week after Friday's practice, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have learned. First off, Cheeto, who's dealing with the illness, did pass us in full on Friday, so he did miss one day. Looks like he should be good, ready, back, 100%, no issue at all. Trey Hendrickson, who had a rest day on Thursday, did pass us in full on Friday. He should be also good to go. Akeem Davis Gaither, who's been dealing with a knee injury for pretty much the whole entire year, which obviously kept him out for a little bit of time, is limited participant in passes on both days. This is kind of just common for him at this point. If you have seen him throughout the year, he constantly gets a limited participant in passes. And then he is now going to be playing on Monday night. So, first three guys are going to be playing. And here is the awesome thing to see. We have T. Higgins, who obviously suffered a hamstring injury. They actually added ankle with this hamstring. This is interesting because before this, it was just the hamstring at all times. Now it says the ankle and the hamstring. I wonder if he actually messed up his ankle too now. Okay, hopefully not. Limited participant in practice on Thursday. Full participant in practice on Friday. He is ready to go for Monday. He said he's 100% back, 100% healthy, ready to play Monday night for us against the Jacksonville Jaguars. BJ Hill, who had a, a rest day on... Actually, it says rest, but it was kind of one of those weird things where he was limited participant in practice, but he also had a rest day. So I think what happened here was he only like practiced halfly or half the time in practice on Thursday. He was limited on Friday, though. So that's definitely something to take in consideration. Um, we're going to have to kind of see what goes on with there. Sam Hubbard was a rest day on, well, again, half a rest day on Thursday, half limited process. But on Friday, he was a full participant in process. Uh, Deontay Smith was limited on both days with his knee injury. Kind of keep an eye out on that, see how that works out. Cam Taylor Britt was also, of course, limited on both days. And they also added an ankle injury to his injury report. So this is just like T here. This is interesting. Is this because of the fact that the whole Joe Burrow thing now, they want to be as precise as possible? Or is it just like in general, like these guys actually got this like even worse than before? Because yesterday, these all just said hamstring, quad, and that's it. It didn't say ankle or on both of these guys. Now it does. So I wonder if there is something that maybe kind of got tweaked a little bit too much. Maybe because they process, you know, limited, limited. Maybe that caused a little bit more problems to happen, which can happen. Injuries are the scariest thing because they can, you know, they can spread to different parts of the body, especially depending on what your injury is. Now, obviously, no, it's not like if you have a quad injury, you're not going to get an arm injury. But if you have a quad injury, right, and then you could have an ankle injury. You, there could be more severe damage down there than you actually initially know. And it might at first look like a quad injury and it ends up being a lot worse than that. So we'll see what happens there. Jake Browning does have a right wrist injury. Same area that Joe Burrow had his injury. Uh, he was a full participant in process on both days. Tanner Hudson with his finger injury was a full participant in process on both days. Um, Tanner Hudson on his injury report, by the way, with his finger injury, it's just because now the Bengals are being proactive about avoiding any problem with not listing a player on the injury report when they need to. So that's really why he's on the injury report. It's the same reason why Jake Browning's on the injury report. Both of them are fine, but they have to now. They're not going to play around anymore and chance the NFL looking into them. Drew Sample, a uh, foot injury, was a full participant in practice on both days. And then Logan Wilson, which again, had an ankle injury. Now it says ankle foot injury, which is interesting. Full participant in practice on both days. And then Jay, our D-tackle, had an illness. So now he is did not participate in practice on Thursday. He got a rest day on Wednesday. Oh, sorry, on Thursday he had a rest day. Friday he did not participate in practice. So... Time to take in consideration moving forward if, you know, potentially he won't play. I'm going to guess he does play if it's an illness. Most likely he'll be good to go by Monday night. But again, like I said, he could be a game time decision based on how bad the illness actually is. For their list here, we have Tyson Campbell, the cornerback, has a hamstring injury. He was limited in practice on both Thursday and Friday. Um, Travis Etienne there has a rib injury. Limited on practice on Thursday and Friday. Luke Farrell has a two injury. Limited participating in practice on both days. And then Brenton Strange, the rookie tight end, 
had a foot injury. He did not practice on Thursday. Watch well, that. He was rest day on Thursday, limited on Friday. So obviously, yes, there is one more day of practice Saturday before we kind of get the final injury report of whether a player is playing or not. We're kind of find out tomorrow. Right? We find out tomorrow if a player is questionable, doubtful, you know, going to play out officially, etc. Now I will say though. I think if I am correct here, I believe they also have another player on their depth, or another offensive lineman who recently got hurt for the season. Because I saw something about the fact that when we play them, they're going to be without somebody against us. And let me go ahead and mute that. Um, I thought one of their offensive linemen got hurt. Maybe I'm incorrect. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like that. Because Antoine Harrison is actually the first round draft pick. The guy we were about to play, if you remember. I'm sorry, about to get. When we tried to trade Jonah Williams to them to get him. So that was actually the guy we was trying to get from them. The pick we tried to get from them to take him. So that didn't work out in the end. They ended up taking him with that pick. Um, no, never mind. It doesn't look like there's any little injured guys on their offensive line. I saw something about, like, maybe not this team then. One of these teams were playing upcoming. One of the offensive linemen, right tackle, I thought, was out for the season. Uh, but again, like I said, it's going to be a tough game, man. It really will be. There's no easy way to put it. It's going to be a long game, and it's going to be a back-and-forth game. But we can win this game. And it's going to come down to Jake Browning really putting on a performance on Monday Night Football. Listen, Monday Night Football, primetime games, that's where we see the greatest from players, and we see the worst from players. <laughs> I think that's pretty much the best way to put it. We see players go out there and absolutely show out and play amazing and look absolutely domination amazing like oh my gosh that guy is so good and then we see players you know choke Kirk Cousins it's a good example of that who they can't play on prime time games and when the lights come on they choke the most the problem is we're gonna see if uh our boy Jake Browning is gonna choke on prime time or if he's gonna be good on prime time and <laughs> he's gonna be in front of what probably will be a millions upon millions of people watching him whether or not he is going to win or lose this game. Keep in mind that our Vikings game moving forward, which was a primetime game too, got slated out of the primetime uh, area or the primetime section, and now it's going to be a 1 o'clock game. So they are going to be taking away all of our primetime games, which we only had two more anyway. They're going to take away, other than this game, they're going to take away our only other primetime game of the year, and they're going to slot it out because nobody wants to watch Jake Browning on Monday Night Football. Or Sunday night or Thursday night. So, because of that, yeah. It's funny, though, because I kind of feel like low-key, and this is my personal opinion here, okay? If A.J. McCarron was playing against that Vikings game, I feel like they don't slot out that game. I don't. I feel like they don't slot that game out. Because I feel like there would be people who would watch just because of A.J. McCarron. But, my personal opinion. I'll see you guys in the next one, though.